Hello all my truth seekers in this video I will discuss the actual existence of dinosaurs, giants, and mountains. Do they all coincide in their real existence? Were we all lied to? Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either end the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. As most of you may know, I've never believed in the theory of dinosaurs. They weren't mentioned in any history books, carved on walls, or found in ancient scrolls for the Bible or any other ancient texts. We just believe this spontaneous theory when they allegedly found bones, which they conveniently calculated to be not of thousands of years, but millions of years. They even knew the long scientific name of these excited dinosaurs, what they do have it written on some wall or something. I mean, give me a break. The long, coincidentally scientific name that modern day scientists like to use and name random things. I say modern day because ancient scientists didn't need to create long ridiculous names for animals and birds, etc. Thousands of years ago, they called it for what it was. They didn't create alternate names. The Tower of Babel story is symbolic of them cutting down our ancient trees. Once they cut the trees down, we used to let our locks grow real long. And our locks was connected to these trees, these energy pyramids, these energy towers. So once they cut our ancient trees down, then we lost our ancient connection with our planet. That was the first thing they did to us. I keep telling y'all, every mountaintop is a motherfucking tree stump, my nigga. There's no such thing as a mountain. Those are ancient trees that were cut down and they are hiding the truth from you in plain sight. Because if they let you know that, that ain't no mountain, that's really a tree stump. You're like, oh shit, that was a big ass tree. Now they got to answer this for you. Why the fuck was the tree so big? Now that's going to lead into where you was on a higher frequency and y'all were bigger. Up oh, now we back to that story of these giants that walked earth again. And you can Google that. They stay digging up bones of us 30, 40, 50 feet. Era, I keep telling y'all, ain't no such thing as no motherfucking dinosaurs. They didn't even mention them in their Bible. I don't see a documentary, not a chapter in their Bible. How the fuck you forget to mention them? Because they never existed. You know what the dinosaur bones come from? Your bones. Those are the bones of how big we were. And then they just take, they go make a fake ass alligator head and put it on them big ass bones. And put that shit up in a museum and name the dinosaurs. And made all these fancy names. Triceratops. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Fuck out of here. Them hour bones in that bitch, nigga. Go in any museum and ask to touch the dinosaur bones. They're going to be plastered bones. They're not real. Then ask them where the real bones at. Right. Under the Vatican with everything else. You show them folks the real bone. Show my people the real bone. Human bone. Yeah, that mean human bones that big. They're grown from human DNA. Mixed with DNA of the natives. Marine in an avatar body. Did the giants really ever roam our planet? Besides the hundreds of newspapers published on skeletal remains of giants, it's pretty weird that literally every single ancient civilization has stories of giants in it. Just to get a good look, here's a list of some of them. And some of the ancient texts. What's weird is that in the 18 and 1900s, mainstream archaeology was much more open to sharing evidence on this. Like I said before, even the New York Times published several newspapers on them. In Mexico, they found an 8 foot tall giant. And in the U.S., they found one that was 12 feet. Here's some of the places they found them just in the U.S. And here's some of their sizes. Then out of nowhere, all the evidence they had been gathering suddenly began disappearing. The weird thing was that all the giant human skeletons were always sent to the Smithsonian for further study. They even went out of their way to purchase the San Diego giant for $15,000. But have you seen any of them in their museum? No. fossils you never heard them even in their bible in their man-made hue man-made bible they didn't write about the dinosaurs did they no they did not you never heard them talk about dinosaurs did you because they never existed those are bones our bones and they can't tell you that that was you and that you were bigger because the planet was higher in frequency and in dimension 
So the animals was bigger. If you've been keeping up, I've been posting pictures showing you guys these different animals and how huge they was. All right? Bones, they dig up of us all the time to keep the truth away from you about who and what you really are. They want you to believe that you're a black person, a Latino. They want you to believe you're an African-American, a Latin American. They want you to believe you're an African, a Southern American. All right? As I researched, I discovered that William Parker Folk discovered the first dinosaur bones in 1858. Now, before I go any further, let's talk about this William Folk person. As I said, the first full dinosaur skeleton found in North America was that of Hatterosaurus folkii, which means folks big lizard, and was found in Haddonfield, New Jersey in 1858. William Parker Folk was an abolitionist, prison reformer, pamphleteer, philanthropist, lawyer, historian, geologist. Remember, they didn't have to do a lot of college time back in those days, so a lot of college people are way smarter than, than they were back then, trust me. He was born in Philadelphia, was descended from Welsh Quakers who came to America in 1698. His work as a geologist led directly to the discovery that Joseph Leedy, partly named for him and for which he is now best known. Oh, yes. Even though Folk became a lawyer in 1851, you couldn't really say that it was his life's work. He became involved with two changes that would take up so much of his time and energy over the next four years. Because he had studied law, Folk was aware of the problems of being locked up. In July 1845, he joined the Philadelphia Society for Alleviating the Miseries in Public Prisons. Folk wrote about prison problems in the journal on prison discipline and philanthropy for several years comparing different discipline models. After visiting prisons in the Mid-Atlantic in 1847 and 1848, Folk helped build the new Lancaster County Prison. He also made important contributions to constructing prisons in other Pennsylvania counties. There were ties between him, the Convention of State Prison Wardens, and the American Association for Improvement of Prison Discipline. Folk also backed the Pennsylvania Colonization Society, an anti-slavery group that helped up to 1,000 freed slaves find new homes in West Africa, Libya, every year. Folk always kept his mind about supporting resettlement, even though there was more and more resistance from different groups. He did this until he died in 1865 when he was vice president of the society. So far, this folk person was a pretty decent man. But what was his state of mind upon discovering these bones? Why did he automatically assume they were dinosaurs? Did he hear this before? Well, the answer is yes. He was led by William Boakland, an English scholar born on March 12, 1784, and who died on August 14, 1856. Yes, he was British. Are we even freaking surprised? Buckland was dean of Westminster, a scientist and a paleontologist, a person who studies or is an expert in the branch of science concerned with fossils, animals, and plants. And I've learned that upon this Buckland person, finding these fossils and bones in Kirkdale Cave in Yorkshire, he came to a conclusion that the hyenas lived in the cave during the late well, okay, I'm sorry. I don't know why I all of a sudden got into the accent, but I felt that's how he was talking at that time. I'm just saying. Late Palestine, which is an unverified concocted theory of the epoch, which is a period of events and characters, well, from what they say millions of years ago, he says the fossils seem to be the remains of these hyenas and the animals they had eaten. There were not the remains of animals that had died in some unknown flood, but knowing these naive explorers, they may have been referring to a great, you know, the great flood in the Bible. And it had been carried from the tropics by the rising waters. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, as he said, others had this first thought as well. In 1822, he wrote this. It must already appear probable, from the facts above described, particularly from the comminuted state and apparently gnawed condition of the bones, that the cave in Kirkdale was, during a long succession of years, 
inhabited as a den of hyenas, and that they dragged into its recesses the other animal bodies whose remains are found mixed indiscriminately with their own. This conjecture is rendered almost certain by the discovery I made, of many small balls of the solid calcareous excrement of an animal that had fed on bones. It was at first sight recognized by the keeper of the menagerie at Exeter Change, as resembling, in both form and appearance, the feces of the spotted or cape hyena, which he stated to be greedy of bones beyond all other beasts in his care. Now, sorry if I butchered that, but I just had to say it like that. To sum it up, these early educated men didn't know what the bones were, or they did know and lied and started guessing or making it up. So why should we take their findings as credible evidence of these alleged dinosaurs that they had named? Didn't history credit their existence? Or did they? I don't know. Oh, I'm not done yet. There's more. To further verify that these were bones of giants, they merely took some giant human bones mixed with their crocodile or alligator head and tail, whatever. Just look at the dinosaur's rib cage. This is proof right here. All their rib cages are separated. Yeah. No animals, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, humans, etc. have separated rib cages. This means that when they concocted these random bones, they placed the bones separately to make these fake creatures bigger. But not forgetting that nearly every museum in the world has dinosaur bones. How is that possible? It's possible because they're fake. Now, that is completely, utterly debunked now. Let's discuss giant trees and their connections to history, mountains and giants. It's been theorized, as we've always read in the Bible, that giants were of existence, despite the old fake giant pictures being shared all over social media. The existence of these giant beings is being primarily discovered all over America. The race of these beings is etched on walls discussed in the Book of Enoch and other ancient texts. Most historical archaeologists like to say that giants are merely aliens or some other entities. They even go far as to say any historical and artistic structures that have been built were built by aliens or extraterrestrials. I was hoping you could take a look at this clip from one of my videos. Pivotal moment arrived when the secret transgressions of the Lord God Enki, laying and sleeping with earth women, was unveiled to the Anunnaki watchers. A law forbidden by their solemn oaths, even by the Prince of Nibiru. These Anunnaki, who toiled as laborers and watchers of men, became aware of the forbidden birth of Noah, Enki's son. The watchers fueling with feelings of envy, rebellion and jealousy. The culmination of these emotions led the 200 watchers to defy the orders and decrees of God, namely Anu the father and his son Enki. The 200 watchers led by Semjaza took oaths to proceed with their plan to mate with human women. The following chapter 3 of the book Enoch reads, And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them, and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men, and beget us children. And Semjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath, and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations, not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together, and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all two hundred, who descended down from heaven in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon, because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. The next following passage reads, And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one. And they began to go in unto them, and to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments, and the cutting of roots, and made them acquainted with plants. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless rogue Anunnaki who married the human women and taught the children of men forbidden knowledge of the gods. Nine fallen Anunnaki were the heads of this rebellion against their lords. The first was Azazel 
who taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beautifying of the eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures. And there arose much godlessness and they committed fornication and they were led astray and became corrupt in all of their ways. Semjaza taught enchantments and root cuttings, Amaros the resolving of enchantments, Barakiel taught astrology, Kokabel the constellations, Ezekiel the knowledge of the clouds, Arakiel the signs of the earth, Shamsiel the signs of the sun, and Sariel the course of the moon. And when the daughters of men became pregnant, some fatally died during childbirth, and those who survived bared great giants, whose height was 3,000 ells, around 12 to 32 feet in height, and who then consumed all the acquisitions of men. In this ancient Ethiopian biblical text of Enoch, a verse mentions these giants in Numbers 1333, which reads, And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, who come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. The Nephilim's existence disrupted the natural order and brought about violence and corruption on the planet. The still loyal Anunnaki informed Enki, and Enki then ordered the Watchers to be captured and killed. But by this time, their offspring had already spread. The colossal Nephilim, born from the union of Anunnaki males and earthly women, were depicted as mostly distorted giants. However, some looked similar to man, besides giant height. This new race possessed remarkable might and towering stature, akin to demigods in comparison to humans. They wielded extraordinary capabilities and gained renown for their immense power. Nevertheless, their presence wrought havoc upon the harmonious balance. The sons of Anunnaki gods became enemies of man. They ravaged villages to feed their hunger, ate babies and drank the blood of the men they murdered with little physical effort. Yet humanity concealed greater strength and ferocity than initially apparent. The sons of man waged a retaliatory struggle, culminating in the defeat of numerous mighty giants. The humans were keen, strong, intelligent and resourceful. The battles continued until the progeny of both deities and mortals stood as adversaries in parallel, locked in conflict. It was then the cries of death from humanity and the giants reached the heavens. Enki and his brother Enlil, along with the Nibiru High Council, decided that a massive flood was the only assurance to eliminate the Nephilim giants for good off of the earth. They agreed that within one week's time, the Great Flood would be initiated by Lord God Enki and Lord God Enlil. However, Enki was conflicted due to his love for his earthly son Noah, known as Zisudra. That very night in his quarters in Adam's calendar, which is modern-day South Africa, Enki had a deep dream vision in which a mystery emissary appears to Enki, and this emissary instructed Enki to save humanity through his son Noah. Enki believes this mysterious emissary in his vision is the great creator of all, the creator that all beings in the universe must falter to. Prohibited from addressing his son directly, he approaches Noah's dwelling and communicates with Noah through the house barrier, urging him to awaken and prepare for an impending cataclysmic flood set to engulf the world in seven days. Enki then secretly guided Noah to build a submarine-like boat to survive the impending flood and collect and preserve essential DNA samples for restarting life on Earth. The flood was triggered by a technological weapon from Nibiru's mothership initiated by Enki and Enlil themselves. The weapon sent out a beam towards Earth's ice sheet and caused it to slip. This resulted in a massive colossal floods and thousands of earthquakes causing widespread devastation. Noah's Anunnaki engineered boat eventually settled on Mount Salvation. Enki came to greet him, and in a whirlwind his brother Enlil descended and discovers Enki's duplicity with the oaths to the council by helping his human son survive. Enki then convinced Enlil it was destined by the creator of all who came to him in dream vision. Subsequently, Noah and his family survived, and Earth was revived of life and biologies. The descendants of Noah then went on to rule the new land for generations to come. The story of the Watchers and the Nephilim in the Book of Enoch 
serves as a cautionary truth about the alien Anunnaki watchers who were fallen angels in Sumerian or biblical text. These otherworldly beings masqueraded as God and fought over the ownership of the earth and its inhabitants. However, in this story, we do see the amazing power and resilience of mankind and how it is bedded in our genes to surpass these beings known as cosmic engineers who are not the true creator of the universe, but false gods. If you like this video, please share, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Astral Legends for more. Now, disregarding the evidence of Negro giants help building structures drawn all over walls in Africa and here in America especially. So why the cover up? Why? Well, if these giants were of Caucasian race, there would be no reason to lie, correct? This tells me that these giants are indeed of Negro, Black, Nubian race, which is why they lied about their existence and then some. Hmm. The proof of giants proves the existence of huge trees. Take a look at these ancient findings. crazy right just think all these years i've been enamored with mountains not thinking that some of these mountains were chopped tree trunks but now that i at that with a new perspective i can see the tree wings on top of the tree trunks so this means that thousands of years ago some of the areas that look like a cluster of mountains were forest with huge trees and caves and flowing rivers between them. This realization confirms the carvings on walls and in books. The ancient gods and goddesses standing tall next to the tall structures or animals or trees and shorter people standing next to them. I know many of us see that. We just thought it was just them painting themselves large. No, but it is what it is. They were indeed large. This is why the government is trying to ban TikTok. They hate that the truth is being revealed. May the fire of repentance and karma attract those who oppose the freedom of TikTok users and listeners to well-controlled and filtered, copyrighted, flagged, fact-checked on based on their reality of history. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Let them feel karma so motivated. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below on that note. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you can get notifications for when I do post my videos. See you all later. Bye.